in this video we're going to be talking about this interesting report published by this japanese ah cardiology surgeon that talks about how you can protect your immunity in case of covid nineteen infection my name is dr. mikhailo raschik of mirror genomics and let's get started so i came across this small commentary if you will by the surgeon who works in one of the hospitals in japan and basically in that report he comments that they are noticing that they have a increasing number of patients who are having a hard time recovering from infections and uh, these are uh, many of these are vaccinated people and this particular um, surgeon mentioned that it starts to appear to to him that these patients look as if they were immunocompromised so what's uh, also interesting that in order to support um, his claim he brought up a, 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 an article published in Lancet that uh, showed uh, also showed negative vaccine uh, efficacy so we published a video on that recently based on UK data not, not that long ago and so this is the second um, publication now that I that I have now encountered that actually might be indicating this so in that particular Lancet publication what the authors showed is that they measured this is based on Swedish population they measured 840,000 vaccine or eight, almost 850,000 vaccinated individuals versus 850,000 unvaccinated individuals and they measured the vaccine effectiveness from prevention from COVID-19 infection in the first uh, in the first uh, nine months of uh, 2021 and basically the vaccine showed 90% effectiveness in the first month post vaccination and then it started waning rapidly and by the time uh, you reach seven months post vaccination there was pretty much no uh, there was no vaccine effectiveness seen it was zero and by the time you hit eight months basically you could observe negative vaccine uh, effectiveness which once again means that vaccinated people were more likely to be infected than unvaccinated people so as i mentioned this is now the second time i see this type of report i'm worried that we might be seeing this more and more often in the future so get ready obviously this is unwelcome news and and um i'm hoping to basically um, maybe focus more on the series that that I wanted to introduce on optimism and how you can use optimism to boost your immune system so please check it out I've already started making these videos as well and the reason why is because I just don't want to focus just on like the sad news that we might be seeing uh, based on some of the complications that some individuals might observe this is not obviously uh, everyone uh, so but another information that the surgeon brought up is that they're also we're observing and it's published in the literature as well that vaccinated individuals are more likely to experience shingles and we also made a video on this topic uh, before and in essence this information uh, together implies that such individuals are experiencing what is effectively referred to as vaccine acquired uh, immunodeficiency syndrome or like AIDS but with a V before that so VAIDS and um, because of that and this is the important component I think of that information published by the surgeon the the surgeon mentioned that uh, now doctors when they're dealing with vaccinated patients they should consider noting when the patient has been vaccinated in case the history of vaccination has to be taken into consideration for the likelihood of experiencing infection related uh, post-surgery and also potentially check uh, the organ system because of the possibility that spike protein at, uh, at some individuals might lead to organ damage and this is specifically um, related to potential damage in a cardiovascular system because that's where spike protein might lead to some of the, the damages. So that's one thing, but it is the immune system protection that, that I found very interesting and I want to talk about that. This author mentioned five possible ways of how we could be protecting or helping immune system. So mm, one thing that uh, the author mentioned is that we should, we should be careful in terms of how we manage body temperature and uh, the author suggested that the use of uh, 
drugs that that reduce body temperature post infection such as those non um, non uh, uh, steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory drugs should be not used the reason why is because you actually might want to have that high temperature because high temperature post infection not only helps to stimulate the immune system it also helps to shut down the viruses and if the fever gets really high there are other methods that could be utilized in order to manage uh, high temperature and uh, another one that I found interesting was that um, the use of lipid emulsion emulsions should be avoided so what is that basically it's like a soluble fat liquid that can be used with certain medications uh, this is especially uh, used uh, for intake of sedatives uh, and that can be used for patients that have to be intubated and the reason why is because uh, the lipid emulsion can be um, can can be immunosuppressive in its own right and uh, the author this author also published another um, paper specifically on that topic alone and basically the author mentioned that um, such as uh, such drugs um, one example mentioned was uh, propofol I think I believe this is from my memory so I can't remember and they noticed that when they were using that drug in in their own hospital they saw increased rates of uh, of infections amongst patients and uh, that could be one of the reasons why and they he elaborated that what might be happening there is that what if the fat molecules are not taken up by specific proteins that are supposed to be interacting with it or other molecules then basically immune cells might be might be clearing it up uh, and that might remove those immune cells from being able to to actively work in protecting the patients from infection so that was another one the other the third one they mentioned was uh, limit use of antibiotics and the reason why is because uh, antibiotics should be used judiciously and sporadically only and the reason why is because you do not want to be disturbing the microbiota which plays healthy microbiota play a, a very important role in protecting uh, your immune system as well and uh, and the other one that they mention is uh, cessation of smoking smoking is detrimental to immune system and finally uh, stress so avoiding stressful situations as well because that is also um, negative uh, can have negative outcomes towards um, towards um, immune system uh, degradation as well so uh, um, I thought that was super interesting and I wanted to actually share that information with you and so this particular um, surgeon published few of these articles and we just thought that would be worthwhile sharing with you and um, also as you can see there are some patients can have negative outcomes as a consequence of a vaccination and uh, we need to know how to best take care of them in order to minimize complications when it comes to um, cardiac surgeries so just that this would be great to share with you all right with you still with me i wanted to let you know we have another COVID uh, q a coming up if you want free tickets to that please uh, uh, let us know so the first 10 uh, people who will subscribe to our newsletter will send you free tickets those are a lot of fun those are basically support sessions and we uh, answer a bunch of questions but we also review a bunch of literature that people can bring to us and we we uh, discuss that and it's it's an open mic session so if you have any questions we answer that we have another event coming up as well uh, for business owners that might be interested in providing a, a proactive wellness program for their employees this is a program i built with two other experts as well one is a financial expert and the other one is mental health expert and the purpose of the program is to provide background education on how best to take care of yourself from multiple different arenas of well-being and I also wanted to let you know, hey, we're still uh, looking forward to uh, anyone who would be interested in answering our survey related to um, epigenetic testing that could determine your biological aging as opposed to chronological aging. And the reason why um, we are particularly interested in uh, in in this well first of all we're onboarding this test in our catalog but uh, the reason why is because there is mounting evidence that 
how you biologically age is an important indication of how likely you might suffer from COVID-19 and also you can use that biological aging process as well to, to monitor how well your life, life, lifestyle interventions are working to your benefit because you can improve your biological aging uh, through your lifetime intervention. So if you're interested in that, the survey link is also in the description below. So please check it out. All right. Um, so let's see if I can show you the background one more time. That's a, that's a glacier that actually um, produces the river that runs through my home city. So this is a really cool spot. So, uh, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. But hey, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to our channel and give us a like and leave, leave comments in, in the video below. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye everyone.